Hello my loves, and welcome to what is probably the most difficult video I've ever had to make. Today, I want to rank all of Kylie Minogue's albums, minus her Christmas album, and her various greatest hits compilations and EPs. Kylie Minogue is a top 5 favorite artist of mine, so trying to be as objective as possible was pretty challenging for me when making this, but I genuinely stand by my ranking, and welcome all of you to share what your rankings would be. And in case this wasn't totally clear, this is all just my opinion, and I by no means think that this list is the objective truth. This is all just based on what I think, and if you disagree it's no big deal, it's literally just music. But without further ado, let's get to it with... Enjoy Yourself. Her sophomore album, 1989's Enjoy Yourself certainly has its enjoyable moments, but overall, I find it to be her most middling record. I don't think that there's a bad song here, but there's a lot of fluff and filler. You could tell her songwriting and production team, Stock Aiken Waterman, who also primarily produced her first four albums, were leaning hard into the girl next door image for this one. And while it works as a cutesy, charming bubblegum pop record, there's not much here that stands out in a big way. In my opinion, the highlights are Wouldn't Change a Thing, Never Too Late, Nothing To Lose, I'm Over Dreaming Over You, Just Wanna Love You, and the title track. Outside of those, and frankly, none of those would probably even be in my top 40 favorite Kylie songs. I don't revisit Enjoy Yourself that often. It's cute and by no means bad, but definitely the weakest link in such a strong discography. Number 14, let's get to it. It hurts me to put this this low, since Let's Get To It is one of those albums I probably love more than I should. I'll admit it, the album is a mess. It's all over the place, ranging from saccharine love ballads like No Worlds Without You and If You Were With Me Now, to high energy dance cuts like I Guess I Like It Like That, and the b-sides Do You Dare and Closer. As a little background, this was the fourth and final album Kylie made with Stock Aiken Waterman, and by this point, she'd wanted to branch out to making more clubby dance music, as opposed to the bubblegum teen pop of her first three records. As a result of Kylie's wishes, and SAW's typical production style, Let's Get To It is a sonic mishmash of genres that never really comes together in a cohesive way, but I'll be damned if it doesn't have some genuine bangers on it. Even though I truthfully think it has the weakest singles lineup of any of her albums, tracks like Too Much Of A Good Thing, Right Here Right Now, I Guess I Like It Like That, No Worlds Without You, Closer, Say The Word I'll Be There, and the title track, All Slap. While it may be totally all over the place, Let's Get To It is still worth checking out for some underrated tracks. Number 13, Golden. When I heard Kylie had a country album, I winced a little, I'll be honest. No offense to country music lovers at all, but I just honestly didn't know how Kylie of all people would fit into the genre. And speaking as someone who doesn't listen to country, I personally think she did a great job as Golden is a refreshing little detour from what you'd expect from Kylie. I honestly see it more as her usual disco, campy dance pop, but with a coating of country on top. There's still hooks on hooks and catchy pop melodies, but this time there also happens to be fiddles. Golden is Kylie's most personal album since 1997's Impossible Princess, with lyrics about life, past relationships, family, and mortality. Honestly, the more emotional tracks like Shelby 68, Lost Without You, and Sincerely Yours are among her most vulnerable and touching, making Golden a great album if you need a good cry. I rank it this low simply because it feels like a little bit more of an experiment. I don't want to say Kylie's out of her depth doing country music. Frankly, she is one of those unique artists that can seamlessly incorporate any genre into her discography. But as a general rule, I do think Kylie's best albums tend to sound better on a nightclub dance floor as opposed to a western saloon. Still, Golden is a phenomenal album. Number 12, Kylie. Her debut, 1988's Kylie, is about as classic as you can get. The singles lineup from this era was utterly stacked with hits, allowing Kylie to cement herself as pop's new sensation. I think the album itself holds up fairly well. It's a similar case to Madonna's debut, where yeah sure you could say outside of the singles there's nothing really that great, but in both albums cases, damn near the whole track listing is just the singles anyways. And also I have to disagree with that argument since Look My Way is on here, which is one of my all time favorite Kylie deep cuts, 
Possibly a top 25 Kylie song for me of all time. I'm not even kidding. I love it that much. It's just pure quintessential 80s bubblegum greatness, just like the rest of this album, honestly. Kylie is a serotonin booster, the type of album you put on when you just want to let loose, dance, and have fun. That classic Stock Aiken Waterman bubblegum pop sound is really what brings this album to life, and Kylie's charming charisma is what gives it its heart and soul. Sure, its production might sound a little dated, but enduring hits like I Should Be So Lucky, It's No Secret, and The Locomotion keep this album timeless. As far as pure, unadulterated bubblegum pop goes, you can't get much better than this one. Number 11, Kylie Minogue. Her other self-titled album, 1994's Kylie Minogue, which I'll just call KM94, marks the transition from the bubbly girl next door persona she'd cultivated to indie Kylie, the newer, grungier, chicer, and frankly, cuntier Kylie of the 90s. Not only did her public image change to a more alternative style, but the music was way more experimental, incorporating genres like trip hop, R&B, jazz, and house to make what's possibly her most sophisticated and poshest record. The lead single, Confide in Me, became one of Kylie's biggest hits, and is often ranked as one of her best. It was a radical image overhaul, to say the least. But make no mistake, even though the music was a little weirder, it was still dance pop at its core, but it was more influenced by the contemporary works of artists like Janet Jackson and Madonna. The result is a gorgeous, ambient, and classy listening experience, just begging to be paired with a glass of wine. My personal favorite track is Put Yourself in My Place, an easy top favorite Kylie song of mine. There's something so soothing about it. It's one of those songs that makes me transcend, I swear. While I wouldn't place it among her all-time best, Kylie Minogue is still worthy of the respect its title commands. Number 10, Rhythm of Love. Something feels off about putting this above the last one, but honestly, I see them as interchangeable. Regardless, Rhythm of Love was Kylie's third album with Stock Aiken Waterman, and by this point they were experts in crafting sparkly, joyous, widely appealing dance hits. Rhythm of Love, in my opinion, is the finest selection of early Kylie goodness. Not only do you have some of her most quintessential 90s hits, like Better the Devil You Know, Shocked, and Step Back in Time, but you also have a tight track list of banger after banger, all of which embody the optimistic, hopelessly romantic, and charismatic charm of Ms. Minogue. While the upbeat dance tracks like One Boy Girl and Secrets are great ear candy, I usually revisit the more sappier songs, like Things Can Only Get Better and The World Still Turns. It sounds quite gay of me to say this, but they genuinely give me hope in really crappy times in my life. I think that's why I genuinely think this is the superior album to KM94. While I adore that album, Rhythm of Love has this charming, wide-eyed sincerity to it that just appeals to a sap like me. If you had to pick just one of her first four albums to listen to, I'd recommend this one. Number 9, Kiss Me Once. In my mind, this feels wrong, but in my heart, it feels right. Her only album with Jay-Z's label, Rock Nation, 2014's Kiss Me Once is a divisive project among fans. Some believe it was an imitation of current trends of the US music market, while others, such as myself, find it to be a pristine collection of perfect pop bliss. It might not be the most cohesive, but the tracks themselves are all top tier bangers. Songs like the title track, Sexy Love, If Only, Feel So Good, Million Miles, and the soul-stirring lead single, Into the Blue, just bring me to life. Now, is it true that Kiss Me Once has some of her crazier tracks? Yes, definitely. The bonus track, Mr. President, is hands down one of her horniest, and there's literally three songs with the word sex in them on the track list. My conspiracy theory was she wasn't getting any during this time, and she was pent up, and girl, she was letting it out through the music. I think I give Give Me Once a pass for being a bit silly, because that's exactly what I want from pop music. Overbearing production, quotable lyrics, and sticky hooks is basically all I need, and Kiss Me Once has that in spades. It may be seen by some as a flop, but I'll gladly be one of the few Kiss Me Once stands. Number 8, Body Language. Amora R&B heavy record, 2003's Body Language was yet another change up for Kylie. While it was still dance music, this time she took inspiration from 80s electro R&B and soul music to make the smooth and sexy body language. 
She also took on a more Bridget Bardot inspired look during this time, which is my personal favorite look of hers ever. I mean, come on, look at this bitch. I'm gay and I'm turned on. Back to the album, body language is certainly more understated for a Kylie project. It's not as campy as her previous works, and pretty devoid of the heavy electronic beats of her last record, Fever. Despite this, Kylie's warmth still radiates through every song. I feel like she's so unique of an artist that she can really go into any genre and still be recognizable, and that's what she was able to do with this album. If I had one little critique, I do find the section of tracks 8 through 11 to be kind of middling. Not that they're bad songs at all, but they do rank among some of my lesser favorite Kylie cuts. The b-sides and bonus tracks also weren't that much to write home about, aside from Cruise Control, that song slaps. Overall, Body Language is an incredibly cohesive and tightly produced record that proved that Kylie could put herself into any genre she put her mind to. My favorite songs include the iconic lead single Slow, the even better single Chocolate, Secret, Still Standing, and Red Blooded Woman.